Hello, this is Hal Richardson with A Layman Looks at the Word. We're continuing with our study of giants, the Nephilim in Hebrew. And this will be lesson four in the series. There are hints of angelic technology that could have come from the Nephilim in Genesis chapter 4. In verse 20, it talks about Ada, who was the father of all those that dwell in tents and that have cattle and ways of herding cattle. And Jubal, it says, was also the one that invented the harp and the organ. And Tubal Cain was an art artificer of brass and of iron, and he worked all types of metals. Now, according to Ron Wyatt, when he found the ark in Turkey, that he had rivets that he had taken in and had analyzed that had brass and copper and even aluminum in them. So this was all pre-flood technology, and some of it could have came from the fallen ones. Other books that mention giants or the Nephilim. In 1 Enoch 7, 1 through 6, the fallen angels taught charms and enchantments and apocryphy on the earth. They had the Nephilim who ate mankind and sinned against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish and also drank blood. In the Bible we read in Numbers 13, 31, but the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched into the children of Israel, saying, The land which we have gone to search, it is a land that eats up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw are men of great stature. And in Genesis 6:11, The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. In the book of Jasher 4.18, And their judges and rulers went to the daughters of men and took their wives by force from their husbands according to their choice. And the sons of men in those days took from the cattle of the earth and the beasts of the field and the fowls of the air and taught the mixture of animals of one species with another in order wherewith to, to, to provoke the Lord. And God saw the whole earth and it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted its ways upon the earth, all the men and all the animals. And the Lord said, I will blot out man I created from the face of the earth, yea, from man to the birds of the air together with the cattle and the beasts that are in the field. I repent that I've made them. In Josephus' writings, a first century historian for the Jews, in 523, he said there was giants in Hebron, and there was a bone found as evidence from the time of Joshua. In the apocryphal book, 3 Maccabees 2.4, the giants were killed in the flood. Another apocryphal book, Baruch 3.26-28, the giants were experts in war, they were not chosen by God, and they were destroyed because they had no wisdom. In another apocryphal book, Wisdom 14.6, proud giants perished in the flood while God protected humankind. Here are approximate times. The time of Adam was approximately 4,000 B.C. The time of the flood was 2,400 B.C., the time of Moses was 1400 B.C., and the time of Joshua, 1300 B.C., and the time of David, 1000 B.C. Satan and his fallen angels produced the Nephilim with the women of the earth during all of these times. Has the evil one and the fallen angels stopped in these actions? I don't think so. There are those that teach that there was only one of the Nephilim before the flood and that that gene was passed down. But that's not so. Reading the Bible, it can't be that way. In the first place, Nephilim can't reproduce. It has to be done over again. 
because they're a hybrid. The hybrids that we have, like mules, they can't reproduce. Uh, like uh, the lion and the tiger bred together make a liger, but they can't reproduce because hybrids are sterile. Now, the evil gene and the change of gene that happened in Ham and produced Canaan, that can be passed on. But still, the man has to be possessed by one of the fallen in order to produce a Nephilim with a woman. Even though the Bible doesn't point this out, many women died giving birth to these giants, according to legends. We will go further into that later in this study. David and Goliath, probably one of the more famous stories in the Bible, but it's a truth about a Nephilim. 1 Samuel 17, 3. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them, and there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span. That's 12 feet. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. That's 125 pounds. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders. And his staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron. That's 15 pounds. And one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and he cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine and ye servants of Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, you will be our servants and serve us. 1 Samuel 17:26. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? David knew where he stood, and he knew that this man was a pagan and a Nephilim. 1 Samuel 17.40 And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook, and he put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a scrip, and a sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Remember this, he probably picked those rocks up because Goliath had four brothers, we read in 2 Samuel 21. 1 Samuel 17:45. Then David said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee, and I'll take thy head from thee, and I will give the carcasses to the host of the Philistines this day, and unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, and all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly will know that the Lord saves not with a sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass, when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, David hasted and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. And David put in his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slung it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put the armor in his tent. Ron Wyatt discovered Goliath's sword in the cave called Jeremiah's Grotto when he discovered the Ark of the Covenant. It's quite large, and later it was taken in by priests of the day. They did give it back to David when he had no weapon and was fleeing from Saul. When David took the head of Goliath to Jerusalem, 
He buried it in the place that became known as Golgotha, the place of the skull. It was Goliath's skull that it was named after. Around a thousand years later, Jesus of Nazareth was crucified in that very same place and defeated a greater foe of Satan at Golgotha on the cross. A few years ago, the tabloids said that Goliath's skull had been found. Whether that's true or not, I couldn't tell you. With that, I'm going to conclude this lesson. Be sure and join me next time as we continue in our study of the giants and the Nephilim. Remember that the Bible centers and is around Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Through Him, you can defeat whatever problems you have in your life. We all face our own giants, and He is the absolute only surefire method of not only going to heaven, but living victorious in this life with persecutions, but God gets you out of each one. If you don't know him today, ask Jesus into your life. This is Hal Richardson. Bye for now.